Coming up on Legit Street Cars. Or the engine will just die out. And then we're quite literally just going to put this control unit in the bucket and completely submerge it. Oh my gosh. In some cases you'll see the corrosion just kind of disappear. This is some stuff out of Terminator right here. They just cut the lines. Hey guys, welcome back to Legit Street Cars. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to clean, repair, and replace your car's control units at home DIY style and literally save yourself thousands of dollars. And in my case, $15,000 because that's what the BMW dealership quoted me to fix all of the faulty control units on my Alpina B7. Now, this video applies to all of you, no matter what kind of car you drive. And a common theme with most of my videos is you can do it. You can actually do this stuff at home. And I'm gonna go as far as saying, even if you've never worked on a car before in your life, you can do most of what I'm gonna show you in this video. So with that, make sure to watch the entire video all the way through. I think you guys are gonna learn a ton. And even if you're never gonna work on your own car, sit back, relax, grab yourself some popcorn, maybe a cold pop and enjoy the show. Because after almost every repair, we're gonna watch certain parts of this BMW just spring back to life. All right, let me show you guys the control units in question. They are pretty much all located here in the trunk. And because someone bashed out this back glass in anger for this previous owner, water entered the trunk. This car also sat at an auction lot for possibly a year or two or three. Um, so these units have been soaking in water for quite some time. If you guys remember in the reveal video, there was a bunch of water here by the battery. And a lot of these control units you can see right here have just corrosion on them from sitting in water. And we have a lot of things on this BMW that do not work. So let's start going over everything that works so that by the end of this video, we can visualize what we have fixed. So right off the bat, the power trunk does not work at all. Our comfort access feature is also not working on the Alpina. So typically if you have your remote in your pocket or on you and you press right here, it will lock the door locks automatically. And then when you reach in here, it will unlock. None of that is working. If we go ahead and start up the car, we have a ton of lights, including ABS lights and traction control lights. That's because the ABS unit down below is cracked, it's damaged. We have a tire pressure warning light that's on. One of those modules back there is responsible for that, or at least partially responsible. We could have bad sensors. Um, the radio, none of this stuff works and there are i think three or four modules including a sound amp back there and then we have this charge battery warning this battery can sit forever and it'll fire right up no other issues oh and check this out at least a few times a day the engine just starts to run really bad and the check engine light comes on drivetrain malfunction and this thing is shaking all over the place and then it'll just clear up out of nowhere sometimes or the engine will just die out. All right, so we're gonna start off with this module and I'm not gonna show you how to remove each and every one of them. It's very easy. Basically, there are brackets, a couple 10 millimeters there, one right here, and most of these just lift right out. Then you just go around and disconnect all of the connectors. Very easy to do. Ew, <laughs> this might be one of the worst ones in this video. This control unit looks to have taken on more water than the Titanic. So I'm gonna show you guys the easiest, most DIY affordable method of cleaning control units, starting off with this guy. And then I wanna tackle that battery light and why this engine doesn't run well. But I think this has to do with the infotainment system. So maybe we'll see a screen light up soon. All right guys, so what I'm about to show you is actually a ton of fun. So we're gonna go module by module and take them all apart. So you guys are gonna see the guts, the circuit boards of all of these control units. And most of them, if you just look on the back, just have a bunch of screws that hold it together. All right, let's see what we got. So far, not too bad. You can see a little bit of corrosion in this area here, some right here. Let's peel back a layer here and you wanna be gentle when you're working on circuit boards. You can snap them right in half, which then we'd be dead in the water. I don't really have any tricks for you there. And yeah, pretty typical. You can see right in here, these white areas have a little bit of corrosion and we need to clean those. Here are the easiest DIY at home methods to clean a control unit. So you're gonna wanna get yourself some contact cleaner, some electrical contact cleaner. This is a very specific spray for electronics and circuit boards. So don't use brake clean or carbon choke clean or anything like that, you'll ruin it. Um, so this is some good stuff from CRC. And then if you don't have shop air, 
you can just get one of these dusters because you're going to want to blow it dry and a toothbrush. Any toothbrush will do something cheap with very soft bristles. Now, first things first is you're just going to go ahead and spray down the circuit board with the contact cleaner. In some cases, you'll see the corrosion just kind of disappear. So we're going to do one pass front and back. All right. So at this point, it's just dripping. And what I like to do before I involve the toothbrush is just kind of blow it dry. And gently, you don't have to go nuts with this. The electrical contact cleaner evaporates very quickly. If you don't have any source of pressurized air, you could just let it dry for a few minutes. Then at this point, you just want to look over the board for corrosion that remains like this right here and a little bit more concerning corrosion like this right here. And after we clean this, I'll show you guys why this control unit is pretty much dead in the water, quite literally. So at this point, I'm just going to go ahead and spray this area here. I'm going to do kind of some spot cleaning and then just very gently we're going to use the toothbrush. And basically what we want to do is dislodge the contamination because it can cause interference in the circuit board and cause it not to work. This can cause a short as well. And yes, in some cases, there's not a whole lot you can do about it. But for a few dollars for this can, an old toothbrush and some air, I think it's well worth the try. And there you go. It's perfectly clean now. So this is what it looked like before. And here's what it looks like after. There you go. Give it a brush side to side, up and down, just like your teeth. A little rinse and a little air. Okay, so on that one, we went from this all the way to this, and that looks perfect. So you don't see a break in any of those tiny circuits. It was just corrosion built up around them, which could definitely short circuits together. But in a lot of cases, if it hasn't physically blown through that you can see, you're in good shape. All right, so the big problem with this is the pins. So keep in mind, this thing was potentially soaked in water for years. And this is a worst case scenario for any control unit because then it can start deteriorating away pins to nothing. So I know it's hard to see, but see that black spot right there? There is a pin just straight up missing. So this part of it is all intact. We'd need to do a little bit of cleaning there. Um, but this part of the pin is actually stuck inside of this connector. And you might not think this connector looks bad yet, but if we slide this plastic cover off, you can see these pins are in pretty rough shape. So our broken pin is in there somewhere. It doesn't look like there's a pin in there. Sometimes they do fall out. We kind of got to dig it out the back. Okay, here, I'll just push it up from the bottom. You can see it kind of sticking out here. There we go. Okay. So here's our broken off pen. So the very bottom of the pen just corroded away. Here it is. So I just ordered parts to fix that control unit and the pin for not a lot of money. I'll show you guys a little bit later in the video uh, when the part comes in. But for now, I want to tackle the battery message on the dash and the fact that this engine runs like garbage. So for that, we're going to start by scanning all the control units with Carly connected car. So this is a Bluetooth OBD2 diagnostic tool and it plugs in right there with carly connected to the alpina b7 we can see a lot and for those of you who aren't familiar carly connects via an app to your cell phone or tablet and they just redesigned everything and it's beautiful so i like carly for beginners because it's very easy to diagnose your car and you can learn a lot about your car at the same time their layout is amazing so anyway let's go to features and I've used this quite a few times, but we're going to go down to, should say battery right here. So when you replace the battery on a BMW, you have to register it. And I think the auction had put a new battery in this thing and they never did that. So we're going to do it with Carly and save a lot of money here. So read battery data. And normally this would cost you about an hour of labor at the dealership or a shop. And we're going to do it all with Carly. So everything has been read out right there. And then we just click register battery. And after about 30 seconds, battery registration is finished. All right, so I've let it run for about a minute and that charge battery light is not coming back on. It was on before all the time. So we've definitely fixed that one. All right, so a measly 67 issues found and the smart mechanic is really cool for you beginners out there. So let's go to engine. All right, so of course we're gonna have misfires, but what's causing it? Cylinder injection shutdown, pressure too low in high pressure system. That can definitely do it. So we'll enter the smart mechanic. And this is really cool because it'll give you potential causes in layman's terms so anyone can understand this. Controller unit is defective, signals are faulty. There's a very good chance of that. So with the redesign of the Carly app, you can configure what's important to you. So you can move all this stuff around. 
but I like to keep health customization so you can code in all sorts of cool convenience features. I've added lap timers to cars and stuff like that. And I could go on and on about the features of Carly, including their used car check, which makes sure that your mileage hasn't been tampered with. You can use that before you buy a car. It's awesome. Um, but anyway, I'll drop a link down below and a coupon code for 15% off. When you're on their website, you can double check which features are available for your specific car and you can even unlock more features of Carly with a subscription. All right, so I actually found a local part out of a 750 Li and I bought a few things from this guy. And so now we have the control unit we need to replace the one with the broken pin. I'm crossing my fingers here, but this might be the one that makes our screen light up, but let's take it apart first and make sure it's in good shape. There we go. And yeah. This one is in excellent condition. Pins are all intact as well. And this one also came with a chunk of harness that we can use to make a wiring repair too. So the reason we're gonna do a wiring repair is this one's on its last leg. It's very weak from the corrosion. And it's just a, there we go. <laughs> I was just gonna say, it's just a few bends away from snapping off. And there you have it, it just broke. But no big deal because our used control unit came with a harness just chopped right off from the junkyard. And this has the wire that we need. All right, so we're simply going to cut the end of this wire. Goodbye. And then we're going to line it up with our new wire. We'll give ourselves a little bit of extra. Go ahead and strip the wire. Strip the body harness side. Don't forget your heat shrink. Twist these two together just like this. All right, and then you always want to heat the wire up from the bottom. Don't just go melting solder on the top. And you're not going to need very much. That's it. We're done. Now we'll go ahead and slide the shrink tubing over like that. Use our little creme brulee torch. And there you go, a proper wiring repair and pin replacement. Now, I think the rest of the pins are okay. We're gonna clean them up first. We can use a brass bristled brush on these. Don't have to be super delicate with these pins. So with that pin popped in, this is looking much better and we'll clean up this gray connector that's really not all that bad. Then I just wanna pop out a couple of these other pins just to inspect their integrity, but I think they're gonna be okay. Yeah, like this big ground wire, perfectly fine. We cleaned it up really nice. Snaps right back in. And this gray and yellow, and it's pretty good. We're gonna clean it up though right now. Yeah, this one is super strong. You'll know right away if it's gonna bend and break right off, but this one's good. All right, so I'll put this guy back in. We've already cleaned up our gray connector. Snap these two together. And with that, we went from a super nasty and corroded connector with a broken pin, essentially, all the way to this. A perfectly cleaned connector, inspected pins, one pin being replaced. And now this guy is ready to make a good connection with our new control unit. So we're just gonna slide this back in. All right, let's go ahead and plug this guy back in. And this is the Bluetooth control unit. And this can definitely affect the screen and the audio from not working at all because it's on a fiber optic ring and if there's one break in the ring things won't function properly plug these guys in too and in many cases with these control units you don't need any programming at all a lot of these are considered dumb control units and this is one of them we can just plug this in and go you don't have to have a fancy scanner or bring it to the dealer or anything and just to let you know this part alone at the dealership this module with installation was about seventeen hundred dollars and I think we're about to fix this for about 50. Okay, so I have everything else plugged in at the moment. We're just gonna try it out because that one had a bad pin. So, oh yes, BMW. That is a wonderful, wonderful site. Now, is it gonna do anything past that? I don't know, but we have made some serious progress here and for very little money. Oh, oh, look at this. It's all waking up. Oh, we got lots of other issues going on here. Okay, yes, we know there's an issue with the braking system. This is so cool, the screen didn't work, now it does. Yes, I don't have any audio at the moment, but uh, yeah, we'll have to scan it and look into that a little later. But right now, we have a screen that works, it didn't work before. And with that, let's move on to some more modules and maybe we'll fix this with the next one. Okay, so knowing that we had water in the trunk and knowing that this is the fuel pump control unit, I definitely think this is the correct path in diagnosis. And you can find out what every control unit is simply by typing in the part number into Google or calling your local dealership. So we know this was wet. This is probably what the issue is. And I think I'm gonna use this control unit to show you guys how you can clean these with water. ooh -wee. look at this. This guy's definitely been sitting in some water for quite some time. Let's see what we got. This one's just a plastic cover and you kind of pry the tabs out like that. 
and it comes apart like that. Okay, so right off the bat, we can see some green fuzz right along here, and we can take this one apart further, so let's definitely do that. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Oh, this guy. This guy's dirty. Yes, she is. Let's go clean it with some water. This is water right out of the tap, but it's going through this guy right here. So this is actually a detailing tool. There's a special resin inside of here that deionizes the water. So when you deionize water, you're removing all of the minerals and all of the impurities, and that's what causes water spots when you're rinsing a car off. So this tool was made so you could rinse your car off and not have to dry it. Technically, the purified water can just evaporate and it won't leave a spot. So this is in no way, shape, or form designed to clean circuit boards, but they use deionized water at circuit board manufacturing plants when they're cleaning circuit boards. This is the preferred method. Now they have a different kind of machine, but it essentially does the same thing. So water can clean electronics as long as it doesn't have those minerals and impurities, which causes the corrosion that we're seeing here. So all we're gonna do here is we're gonna turn the valve on. So now the water is flowing through the special resin inside and it's deionizing the water. It's purifying the water. So we just let that run for a little bit. I'm just gonna swish it around here in the bucket. And then we're quite literally just going to put this control unit in the bucket and completely submerge it in deionized water. And that's pretty much all you need. And then at this point, I'm just gonna go around with our toothbrush and we're gonna clean this entire board since it was all dirty. And with the deionized water, since it doesn't have any of the minerals or impurities, it's actually attracting all of those minerals and impurities from the board. So the water here is basically sucking this board clean as we agitate it with the toothbrush. It sometimes helps to take it out of the water to kind of scrub some trouble areas, but make sure you're using a very soft bristled toothbrush and you're not gonna damage anything. I had a cool opportunity to visit a circuit board manufacturer in Kansas. My buddy Elliot Elvis and his dad own a company where they produce the circuit boards and they showed me their deionizing machine and kind of introduced me to the technology and explained it all to me. And it's all very, very fascinating. Give it a rinse. All right, let's go dry it off. So you can see here, it did a very good job of cleaning the entire circuit board. And there are a few trouble spots that we're gonna to have to manually dislodge some of this corrosion. So I just took a copper bristle brush and cut off one of the bristles. And we're just gonna kind of poke around in here and try and agitate some of this stuff. I'm just getting behind each one of these little legs here because we don't want any of the corrosion shorting these to each other. So as long as we can kind of poke through behind it, we're in good shape. And if you're very gentle, you can use a brass brush like this. Don't use a steel one and just go along the leads here. And we're just removing a little bit more of the corrosion, even though we're probably okay at this point. Now don't just scrape up the whole entire board. You don't wanna do that. I'm being very meticulous here and just hitting this area here. All right guys, we're done cleaning this guy up and I'm really happy with the results, especially considering what it looked like before. And so that's how you clean a circuit board with water. All right, so I've reinstalled our fuel pump control unit, so we'll plug it in. And for something like this, something that can leave you stranded, if you can find it used for not a lot of money, I recommend just replacing it. So I do have one of these on order. I'm just gonna carry it around in the glove box because this may last forever. And I'll keep you guys updated on Instagram and Facebook at Legit Streetcars if you wanna follow along for quicker updates. But I don't think there's anything wrong with this control unit any longer. Let's fire it up and see what happens. All right, so far so good, but it would do this before also. We have to clear out the check engine light, but it's running great. So I'm just gonna keep on running it throughout the video and I'll let you guys know at the very end if we had any issues. All right, here's our next control unit and we have 10 of these. So I'm gonna start going pretty quick here. I just wanna show you guys control unit carnage. Let's see what we have. The casing on this is not looking very good, but that doesn't always mean there's anything wrong with the control unit. Okay, so right now it's looking pretty good. This is cool. It's got a little BMW stamp. Like they didn't need to do that. No one's ever gonna see it. That's funny. All right, let's see. Oh, wow. This one looks to be in perfect condition. So this control unit was mounted on the side of the quarter panel. So it's possible that it just got a little bit of humidity on the case, but wasn't saturated in water. It looks great. So we're just gonna go ahead 
put this one back together. Okay, here is probably the biggest control unit we have, and this is the sound amp for the audio. And this was sitting there at the bottom, so it's a good chance we have a lot of corrosion inside of this one. I'm hoping we can save it because it's very expensive. Well, if, if you buy it new, if you buy it new, which we're probably not gonna do if we need one. All right, here we go, here we go. What are we gonna find? Okay, you can see corrosion there. And then you gotta be careful when you're pulling these up because you might run into a ribbon harness like that. Okay, so you don't wanna just yank that up or you can break things. Oh wow, we may have gotten super lucky on this guy. It looks like the water was just kind of sitting in this area here. And I believe that's how this sits. I think this sits down like this. That would be awesome. We don't have any sound obviously coming from the radio. So you would suspect the sound amp or the very first module, I believe was the telecommunications module. And it has the same fiber optic cables as the sound amp. So these are all on a loop. So if one of the modules goes bad, it'll take the whole system down. So this sound amp might be okay. This isn't always the reason why you don't have any sound in a modern car. I go one step further on this one and remove this board, although it looks perfectly fine. Just wanna get a good look at the backside of this board too before we go back together. And I'll probably still do some cleaning on this guy. All right, this one should just slide right out like so. Okay. Put the case to the side. And in a lot of cases, these boards are very well protected. You can see this protective layer, it's kind of yellowish. And this is why we need to use the proper chemicals to clean this because you do not want to remove that. But yeah, overall, this sound amp is looking good. All right, here's another control unit. I've already removed all of the screws. This also has to do with the audio system. And right off the bat, it's looking pretty good. You can see here, Automotive Systems, Harman Becker. So let's see, Harman Becker, how did you do against water in a trunk for probably a couple of years? Pretty awesome. No damage whatsoever. Connectors are looking good. Oh, there's a little bit of corrosion right here. That was probably from moisture and not actual water that seeped in. Otherwise, this would be a lot worse. So you know the drill? A little of that. A little of this. And a little of that again, and a little bit of this. And in a lot of cases, that's all it takes. So the minerals in the water will build up, cause corrosion, cause a short circuit a lot of times between these little solder joints. And if you just remove that, you're good to go. And I fully understand that at the dealership, the service center has to quote you on control unit replacement because they're bound by certain standards by the manufacturer and their proper repair procedure is replacement, especially if you show up with a trunk full of water and potentially water damaged control units. So that's kind of just the nature of the beast, but I'm making this video so you guys know that you do have options. Whether your control unit is just simply faulty or it's gotten wet, you can fix many of these yourself and in a lot of cases for not a lot of money. And let's clean up the connector as well. The pins look to be in really good shape. They're nice and shiny and clean, but it might not make a perfect contact with any of this green fuzz on there. I really like these brass longer bristles because they get in there and they kind of give it a little bit of a scrape but nothing too aggressive plug this guy back in all right so i don't think we had this led light on before that was not working and this might have something to do with the door hand yes it works that didn't work before we cleaned that module so this has the keyless system where you can keep the key in your pocket and then you can unlock and lock it with the handle. And that system did not work. Oh yeah, and then if you keep holding it, it'll do the windows and the mirrors too. Nice, we fixed that just by cleaning the module and the connector, so basically for free. Oh, and check this out, after erasing all the codes and resetting the control units, we have audio. So I can't jam out any tunes on FM because I'll get flagged for copyright. So here we are at AM, but everything works. All right, guys, this is a good one. So remember how the trunk didn't work? <laughs> I think I figured out why. This is by far the worst module we have. This thing has just been soaking in water for a long time. Oh my gosh, look at this. <laughs> there is gonna be no saving this module at all. Look at this, it's just flaking apart. Oh, this is so bad, but luckily we found a used one, again, from the part out. and. Guys, technically I got these for free. I bought like a sunshade 
and a few other miscellaneous parts. And the guy's like, you can just have these modules, but we got to stick a price to it. And these are about $50 on eBay. So another $50 module. And this is another dumb module, which means we don't have to program this one. Hey, look at that. It says, okay. And this is an excellent condition. So we'll go check out the connectors, make sure they're not all corroded. And then let's go plug this in and see if our trunk works. We have a little bit of corrosion on this one. Nothing on that one. And really nothing on this one either. All right, let's give this one a quick clean. This really isn't bad. Yeah, and you can tell right here, none of these pins actually have any corrosion on them. So these are in really good shape. We got lucky for sure on this because they didn't give me the harness chopped off connected to this module. So anyway, with that, let's plug it in and see if our trunk comes to life. And just like that, guys, there's nothing to this. You don't have to be a mechanic, all right? You can just replace some of these modules yourself, not knowing really anything other than how to unplug and plug in a connector. And in many cases, they're color-coded. They won't fit into each other. You can do this. Oh, and check it out, guys. We got the fan to work. So this little fan wasn't working before, and I just cleaned out the connector a little bit, and the pins were in really good condition, and it just fired back up. So that fan is spinning right now. Moment of trunk truth. <laughs> it's got the soft close too and now it wouldn't open before and now it opens fifty dollars folks fifty dollars technically a free control unit because i bought i bought this this is what i bought for like a hundred dollars and the guy's like yeah just just take them but you know readily available parts i know this is an alpina b7 but it's the same trunk control unit a lot of these control units are identical. Actually, I think all of them are identical from the 7 Series. And no programming needed. And how nice is the back end of this car? I mean, you know, minus the shattered glass. So mean. So far, I've been filming this video over the course of the last two weeks. And no check engine light and the engine is running beautifully. And check this out. We have a backup camera with the parking sensors. This is sweet. So we didn't know if this worked before because the screen didn't light up and I kind of forgot to check it, but that's very, very nice. And now I'm in the back seat where these screens did not work before. We can turn them on right there and watch this. Woohoo! These work too. This car is sweet. All right, so with that, next up, we have the ABS control unit, which has gone bad. And let me show you why. And if you guys were around for the reveal of the Alpina, then you've already seen this and I don't really know what happened here. So the front of the ABS pump, which is the control unit, the whole front of it was smashed, physically smashed, but nothing around it was damaged at all. So some of you guys had mentioned that maybe someone tried to jack it up from here. Well, that definitely could have happened, but it would have damaged some of the bottom. This was a hit right from the front, but it's fully protected. Look at this is all metal right here and it's perfect. No scratches, no nothing. Um, so I'm not exactly sure. One theory was that maybe the seal here went bad and water got inside and then it froze and broke the plastic cover off. But yeah, this is why the ABS light is on. And then you can see some of these wires are actually broken and definitely bent. So yeah, this is just kind of a big mystery. All right, so first things first, we're gonna pull the plug and take a guess at how much this control unit costs. So at the dealer, this entire pump is $5,000 just for the part. So probably figure like six grand to replace the pump. Um, and then luckily you can get the control unit separate, but even at the dealer, that's like a $3,000 job. And I'm gonna try and fix this for about $60. And again, just like everything you guys are seeing here, this is stuff you guys can do at home. It's nothing you need to be an actual technician to do, it's, it's all pretty simple. All right, so I'm not exactly sure how to get this out. I would like to try and do this without breaking all of the brake lines loose. Um, so I'm gonna start with the bracket. Okay, and then of course there's a straggler up there that looks really, really difficult to get to. All right, it looks like we can fit a little quarter drive in here. All right, there's our bolt. And then it looks like this is clipped in. There we go. All right, guys, unfortunately, we have to loosen up some brake lines and remove them from a junction box in order to lower the ABS pump and replace the module. And there is a lot of dirt and debris built up here. 
So we had to peel back the fender liner in order to gain access. So not the end of the world, we're gonna get a brake flush out of the deal here, which probably hasn't been done in many years. And we're definitely gonna have to do a little bit of cleaning here too. All right, so we disconnected all those lines and two back here. And now this thing is basically falling out. And there you have it. So it has a little junction block here. It looks kind of intimidating, but once you pull that fender liner down, it's, it's not that bad. It's much better than how this is doing. What happened? The mystery of the control unit. And then there's, of course, corrosion at the bottom from water getting in there. At this point, we're just going to remove these lines because they're getting in the way of pulling the control unit out. All right, so I'll go ahead and just take these two off. I think that's all we need. There we go. And we already took the two bottom screws out. So we'll get these guys going. All right, here we go. Cool. This is some stuff out of Terminator right here. I don't know why this reminds me of the Terminator movie, but it does. Oh man, these things wiggle around and everything. This is cool. I'm just gonna keep this just to kind of play around with. Maybe make like a musical instrument. Dun 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 dun. Terminator mod. This is sent from the future. All right, let's swap it over. It just as jiggly. So you tell if they're good. I'm gonna clean this up a little bit. I notice here at the bottom there's just a wee bit of corrosion. Nothing to be concerned about though. So I do have the entire ABS pump from the donor vehicle. This is just a junkyard car. And the reason I'm not using it though is because they just cut the lines. So we pulled these out and they were just cut. So who knows if water has been sitting inside of this pump forever and the pump and the control unit are completely sealed. So it's not like any brake fluid or anything is going through the control unit for sensors or anything like that. So we know there may be water inside of here, but because there's a thick rubber seal here, no water got inside of here. All the pins are perfect. All right, so with that, let's replace the control unit. And you just want to make sure you're lining up your, your jigglers with the boondoggles. I don't know, I'm making up words here. Line these things up, these futuristic pieces of technology from Terminator. Line them up, push them on like that, and then reinstall your screws. Now, whenever you're getting used control units, you got to make sure that you're double checking the part numbers. So a lot of them are stamped on here. We couldn't see ours or all of it at least. You can see some of it and it matches. Um, but I called up the dealership, used the VIN, and he was able to give me a bunch of compatible numbers. So that was very nice. And now we'll tighten these by hand. And that's that. We've swapped a module. All right, so with the lines back on, I cleaned this up. Everything is very nicey nice. And now we're just going to go ahead and reinstall it in the reverse order. And you can see here that our little junction box will pop in. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and reattach the module with the bracket. And we'll reconnect these rear lines. And then we're gonna reconnect the other lines. And then we're gonna bleed the brakes, which you guys have seen me do on the channel probably 10 times, so I won't show you that again. All right, so the ABS control unit was the only one that needed to be programmed, so all the other ones you guys could have done without any fancy computers. For this, you need a dealer scanner or something close, and I used my Autel Maximus, which is about a $3,000 scanner, and I don't expect you guys to spend that much. So in this case, a great option is to Google a local mobile mechanic. They usually charge about $150 to program a module like this, but even at that, you'd be looking at about $250 all in. And look, we don't have any more ABS or traction control warning lights on the cluster. It's fixed. All right, can you believe it? We have almost all all of the warning lights off of the dash on the Alpina. So all the ABS traction control lights are gone. The one remaining light is for the tire pressure monitoring system. And it requires us to drive the car for about like 12 miles, it says on the screen, to reset that. So we're gonna be doing that in another video along with a few other things. Uh, but we have audio, we have sound coming from the speakers. And check this out. Our remote works now, but that was no fancy control unit cleaning. It just needed a new battery. Um, so I have already gone ahead and reassembled the entire trunk. It's looking nice and factory fresh. And our little fan is working. Everything's where it needs to be. We did some cleaning, so it doesn't even really look like any water has entered the trunk. Well, except for the fact that we still have 
this broken glass. But in the next video, we're going to be finishing the entire Alpina project. So by the end of the next video, this car will be ready to rock. So I have the used sunscreen here for the rear. We're getting a new back glass. I haven't replaced that yet because this is a lot easier to do with no glass. So we might as well take advantage. Um, and there's lots of little odds and ends that we need to finish, but we accomplished a ton in this video and for not a lot of money at all. And I'm probably going to forget a few things that we fixed, but we now have working door handles so you can keep your key in your pocket. We have a trunk that opens and closes properly. We have a radio screen that turns on. We have audio. We have a little fan in the trunk that works. We have an engine that doesn't die out on us anymore. We have no ABS lights on the dash. We have no battery voltage warning on the dash either. I also reset all of the maintenance warning lights on the instrument cluster. And yeah, our Alpina project is really coming together. And I think I have about $150 into everything you saw in this video. Basically, I found a local seven series part out and I bought this and a couple other trim items that you guys are gonna see in the next video when we finish everything. And the guy gave me the control units for free, but I checked on eBay and I would have had about 150 to $200 into buying these things individually anyway. But the point is that you guys can do a lot of this work at home without really any automotive knowledge except what you've learned in this very video. So this applies to every control unit on any car. Some of them are dumb control units that can be cleaned and simply put back together and your car will spring back to life in a lot of cases. So definitely try this out. You have nothing to lose but a lot of money if you bring it to a shop first. So the dealer wanted $15,000 for all this work and we did it for 150. So anyway, with that, I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. And if you did, give the video a big thumbs up, share the video with your friends, subscribe if for some crazy reason you haven't already. And most importantly, have an awesome day. I'll catch all of you in the next video.